Hello, barbarians. It's Rainy here. I am doing the editing, so I just wanted to put in a quick note at the start of the podcast. This is a different recording setup for us because it's a different game setup. And this is our first time using this microphone. I think the microphone is really good. The problem is because it's good, it's picking up a lot of table sounds, including sounds when players are taking notes um, or, you know, basically existing. So I am aware of those issues. We're going to change our setup a little bit for next time. But I do hope you enjoy the content because the game was actually really fun. Um, But in our next part, you should hear some changes um, and those shouldn't be picking up so much. All right. Thank you. Since times before history, we've been gathering around our fires to tell stories. Join us as we play through multiple role-playing game systems, looking for one that's the perfect fit for our next campaign, and hopefully showing you some options that are out there for your own games. Welcome to the Fireside Stories. Hello, barbarians, and welcome to the first part of our Expanse RPG Fireside Story. I'm Rainy. As always, I'm Santiago. I'm Jessica. That's right. There is another person, which is exciting for all of you, I'm sure. And if we sound a little bit different today, it's because our mic setup is different, because it's a group game. So deal with it. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the background of your little adventure, and then we'll get started. Take notes if you need to, or ask questions. I'm fine either way. All right. Ganymede Station. They call it the breadbasket of the belt because Ganymede is that rare body in the solar system with its own natural magnetosphere, protective shielding against radiation. It's what makes the moon's domes fed sunlight from giant orbiting mirrors bountiful enough to supply food for the rest of the belt and the outer planets. It's also what makes Ganymede a favored place for belters to give birth to children. It minimizes the potential for birth defects For generations, Ganymede has grown from one of the first colonies in the outer planets to a thriving hub of millions of people. And you are thinking of the challenges of finding just one person in that multitude, like a single tumbling rock in the vastness of the belt. You and your crew run the Somalier, a small cargo ship that makes runs throughout the belt and outer planets. So you've been bringing um, or taking shipments from Ganymede. Uh, One of your regular clients is a company called Amalthea Ambrosias. They are a corporation based on Titan that supplies luxury items, wine, cheese, chocolate, other delicacies that come from Earth and Mars primarily. And for most people in the outer planets and the belt, These are just very expensive snacks. They're not something that most people would be able to buy. But for those with means, these are delicacies from from the places they may have originally hailed from. Now, this company, Amalthea, has contacted you as part on your way, really, to Ganymede. You guys are making one of your regular deliveries, and you get a message on your comms. You see, Amalthea is run by the Dardanus family, and it seems that that family has misplaced their heir apparent. Kai Dardanus took off from Titan not long after his 18th birthday, and he disappeared. His family has been searching for him for a year now, without any leads or much hope of finding him, until Kai's access codes were used to log into a company system. The login was brief, but it was traced to Ganymede. With your ship already en route for a delivery, you've received this unusual tight beam transmission, a message from Theo Dardanus himself, telling you that if you recover his son and return him to Titan, you will be compensated with enough money to pay off the mortgage on the Somalia. Your crew will own it outright. Of course, Daddy Dardanus <laughs> also made it pretty clear that if you refuse, you might have trouble finding cargo contracts and maybe your dock fees would go up. Rude. And you might have a hard time doing the business that you do out here. And although he didn't say it outright, you also know that because Kai is 18, 
there's nothing that forces him to go home. So the expectation is that you'll bring him back willing or not. Also rude. (laughs) So this is really less of a missing persons investigation and more of an authorized kidnapping. Not that this will matter very much to those that are the de facto law on Ganymede, which is Pinkwater, a corporation that runs security on the station. You said Pinkwater, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So, best to watch your step and maybe be discreet, Sessa. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, your crew is getting ready to land, to dock at Ganymede, to do your normal deliveries. You are already on your way there for normal work purposes. And you have a crew of about six people on the ship. And after talking amongst yourselves, you've decided that because this looks like it, well, whether or not you want it to be, is worth your while to do, a couple of you will kind of break off from the group and look into this, see if you can find some information. It's a big station, so who knows if you'll turn up anything, but it's worth trying. So the rest of your crew will handle the normal deliveries, get new stock on the ship, offload what they've brought, and the two of you will head into the station proper and see if you can't turn up this Kai Dardanus, this missing son from the Dardanus family. Is Ganymede Station like a asteroid? Like is it on an a- or is it part of something or what? Ganymede is a moon of Jupiter. Oh. It's the largest moon of Jupiter and the ninth largest object in the solar system. It's like nine percent larger than the planet Mercury. Guess who's not a space person? So it's big. Okay. It's like a planet, but the station that's on it, it's not like, you know, Earth where you can just like, I'm gonna drive over there. Like it's <laughs> like, you know, tunnels and domes and okay. little, yeah. little small. So it's kind of like a it. part the main of the... part of it is kind of this clump of like domes and environmentally habitable areas. Okay. And then there is like the greater surface of this celestial body oh. as well. Yeah. If you can get to the the surface like the domes to look out, you can see these giant orbital mirrors that are just huge and that they're to focus sunlight on the domes so they can grow soybeans and oh. asparagus and <laughs> space peas <laughs> whatever else yes. mm, <laughs> yeah. delicious but there's um there's a podcast called sneak attack and they their current campaign is like a homebrew sort of space trucker sort of campaign nice and <laughs> when they can't think of the name of something but it's the space version they just put spa in front of it <laughs> so like there's like spoogle when they need to look something up on the internet <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> like, because they just rename everything. But That's yeah, cute. it's very silly. Nice. I like it. Mm. All right. So, Chow, you're from Ganymede originally. You don't really hang out on the station very much anymore when you guys make deliveries here, but you know your way around for the most part. And then Casey, right? Yes. Casey, you're not from here, but you've been on Ganymede a number of times for deliveries. So you've probably been to a few of the bars and places like strip that. Strip clubs. And yeah, absolutely. Okay. Brothels Space even. Strip clubs. Yeah. Sprothels. Yeah. Sprothels. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's not a foreign place to you by any right. means. If you want to think of it, it's kind of, a, it's a bustling trade center for sure. Okay. Um, so it has a little bit of everything. And as you kind of walk out into kind of the main thoroughfare from the docks area, What you notice is it's a lot of, like, sound. Um, So even on your hand terminal, terminology, it's like your spell phone. Okay. Um, (laughs) uh, (laughs) But you'll notice, like, targeted ads will pop up and things like that, and they're, like, sort of partial, like, AR sort of, like, overlay ads and everything. Right. Like, hey, Casey, remember last time when you visited, like, Al's Steakhouse? (laughs) You know, and stuff like that. So you're used to kind of filtering that stuff out. There's a lot of people walking around, um, going from place to place. There are, like, vehicles of sorts helping people get to more distant locations on the station. Um, But it's a pretty busy area, and it's multiple levels. Okay. So it's not like everything's, like, on this main surface area, you can, there are levels going all the way down that they've dug in as well. 
So you know that potentially you have a lot of ground to cover, but not a lot of information. What you remember from the message is that they know Kai is potentially here because his access codes were used on the station. That's all the information you have. You have his name, and you know his access codes were used. What would you guys like to do? Okay, so first thing I want to do is connect to the local network via my hand terminal. Mm -hmm. And I need to start hacking into it to access the logs and information, basically searching for Kai's login and tracing where it went to you and sure. trace down maybe the terminal or whatever that he used or if he used a hand terminal, trace the connection node or what have you, kind of like, so you know how you can, not like you or me, but how it can be done that a cell phone connects to a certain tower when it makes a call or whatever. So part of investigations, they find out, oh, this phone was connected to that tower, which puts your phone at the vicinity of the murder or whatever. They triangulate right. the signal. Yeah, that's yeah. like a Watch part your of like, order. Uh, Jeez. <laughs> enhance. <laughs> enhance. <laughs> that's like yeah. part of that. So, so you're that's using your I'm hand doing. terminal to kind of, not just a surface level, like phone book style search. No. You're trying to get into the system to dive in pinpoint deep where this was yeah, accessed. these are my like skills. Well, I grew up here yeah. and I got involved with the OPA here. And what got me involved with them uh, was they benefited from my knack for getting around station security here You're right. on Ganymede. Yeah. So I've like done this shit before. That's so true. I already know what I'm doing. I'm thinking some of my old back doors are still in place. Yeah. Some of my old root passwords still work. All that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, so I will say. For the sake of listeners who are coming into this maybe not as familiar, or maybe you didn't listen to our episode zero, or for like Jessica, because she's our like every man here, right? Because it's, it's nice really way like of it. no. When it comes to the <laughs> Expanse world, Santi's like hyper nerd. Right. I am semi familiar, and then Jessica's like the newbie. So. Um, just because Jessica's face oh. when you mentioned the OPA, can you explain what the OPA is? <laughs> yeah, I totally did one of these. I was like, the OPA is the Outer Planets Alliance, and it is this loose government that is has been coalescing over the years to give the people of the outer planets, belters and all of the colonists on every little rock or asteroid or moon or what have you from the belt outward, so the Jovian moons and the Saturn moons and all that stuff, uh, one unified voice and legitimacy so that they can um, advocate for their rights. Right on. Because they've just been, they feel that as though they've been exploited over the past several decades by Earth and Mars. Right. So, what skill is Chow using? What ability? So, he's using um, his intelligence ability with his focus in security. Okay. I think that's great. Um, I think that will totally work. So, let's say that our, our target number is 12. Okay. Okay. So, go ahead and roll your 3d6. Whoops. How dare you? JK. Dropped one on the table right off the bat. Here we go. All right. So we got six, nine, 10, 11. Oh. Plus, plus. my ability score right. three, so mm-hmm. 14, plus two for my focus bonus, which is 16. So that's a success. No doubles, so no stunts or anything. No doubles, so I can't be stunting. You were absolutely successful. So you are able to trace the access code that was assigned to Kai Dardanus. Basically his, you know, Amalthea password, right? Is mm-hmm. what he used. Because he's accessing company portals. Okay. And it was you were trace it back to like the physical location, like that IP address equivalent, right? Mm-hmm. Belongs to a business called Lacage. That's a few levels down from where you are at the dock. Lacage? Yes. Let me look that up. What kind of business is that? It is a, from like the location and everything, you would infer that it's a relatively high class bordello. Okay. In the business district. 
Because I'm thinking it's like Le Cage, like it's the cage, but they spell it with like a funky accent. No, or it is spelled like exactly that. like Le Cage, but they call it Le Cage. Like, like it has a little um, weird tick over the A or the E or something like that. Like, <laughs> you would think so. Like w- when it's um, you know. No, that's just how they tell if you're supposed to be there or not. By the way, you say it. Like this yeah. isn't like whipped filling; it's cream. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, filled with cream. This isn't mayonnaise with sriracha in it. It's aioli. <laughs> Fair. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between a bordello and a brothel? Um, It's really the same thing. The face, though. I'm just like, how do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met your wife? <laughs> well, yeah. That's why I'm like, what the hell's happening right now? Um, so I think... The terms are relatively interchangeable, but let's go to the let's go to Spoogle. See? Ya. Let's oh, look it, it up on your hand terminal. I'm not gonna leave this in because it'll mess up everyone's phone. Hold on. Okay. Hello? Okay. Spoogle. What's the difference between a bordello and a brothel? This is my search history forever. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Interchangeable. Brothel, bordello, and whorehouse. Uh, oh, interchangeable terms. <laughs> oh, let's, let's go with whorehouse. <laughs> Casa that del Horse. <laughs> awesome. If you want to be fancy pants, you go to a bordello. Right. And then if you're a little think, lower class, yeah. you go to a brothel. Like I think that's the thing, is you know it's deal. decent quality because it's listed as a bordello. Yeah, like right. that's probably the quality yeah. levels. Because like if you're like a dock worker, broke, you, a whore whore house. House. Yeah, you go to a whorehouse. You go to a whorehouse. Yeah. But like, it's funny though, because even Amos in the series says like it's like we're gonna dock here and we're gonna be there for a while like and they go over like what are you gonna do what are you gonna do and amos is like i just got paid i'm not gonna see the outside of a brothel for three weeks (laughs) like it's pretty awesome back before amos was a developed character that's true and became awesome fair all right so you have successfully traced that login basically Back to Lacage. Okay. I'm going to share that information with Casey. Casey's last name is Katri? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's probably like East Indian if she's a duster. Katri. Yeah. Katri. I think it's a South Asian Indian ancestor. So... I'm standing there like do 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 yeah, do playing like, on his phone. Derping Simple. on my phone basically, yeah, and you're like <sighs> I'm like, we should go check out a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, actually I'm like he's an 18, 19 year old, let's go check out a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Good news, Katri. Looks like I've traced uh, Kai's last login to a local whorehouse puts on fancy airs by calling themselves Le Cage Bordello. Ooh. Looks like it's a couple levels down. You could probably take a tube there. Yep, yeah. let's go check it out. Le Cage is one of a number of licensed bordellos that operates on Ganymede. The location, like I said, is a couple levels down from where you guys came in. And looking around, you see that it's just kind of a standard sort of business district. There are restaurants and bars and bordellos. Um, You know, like it's not a big deal. Oh, it's just what it is. And so um, walking in, you see that there's um, kind of a entry area with a front desk, almost like walking into a hotel. And um, when you enter, there is a friendly looking woman behind the counter. And she says, oh, there is a simple entrance fee, and then we can certainly pair you with whatever entertainment that you are looking for. Okay, so table talk, my communication is two, and yours is zero. So you probably let your fists do the talking. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, I need to know what I'm like looking at my hand terminal. And I want to know where that um, terminal was that the credentials were used. Is it like deeper into the organization? Is it in the lobby? Mm. Like where, where is it? 
I would say to get a little bit more specific, I would need to up that target number a little bit. So you mind if we re-roll? Sure. Now that you're kind of closer and yeah. figuring out where things are. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and make that target number. We'll make it a 14. Okay. A little harder to get more specific. Here we go. All right. Oh. So I got... You got doubles, first of all. I got doubles off the bat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh, dang. I got 15... 18, uh, 20. Okay. And then five stunt points. All right. So you are doing a exploration. Mm -hmm. So feel free to look at that and see if there's any stunts you'd like to apply. Okay. Because this woman has greeted you and you're still standing there derping on your phone and Casey's kind of looking at you because you're usually the one that does the talking, but you're like... <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> so what are you doing for this role? Are you adding anything to it? Uh, let's see here. Since I have... So I don't know if this is going to do any good for me here, mm -hmm. but I want to do it with a flourish. Sure. So I'm, And that's a four stunt point cost stunt. Mm -hmm. And I impress everyone who watches me with my showmanship and gain a plus one to oppose tests against them for the rest of the encounter. So I don't know if that's going to necessarily help at all, mm. but um, the other one would be Speed Demon, where I complete my test in half the time it would otherwise take. I'd say, like, with a flourish, right? So you have the, the friendly-looking person behind the desk mm -hmm. is asking you guys for the entrance fee. Um, this is, you would probably be more familiar with this, Casey, but nice bordellos, or whorehouses, as you may refer to them. Whorehouse. Um, Whor. The way that they keep out the riffraff mm -hmm. is by having a cover charge. Yeah. It's just one of the ways you keep it a little nicer, yeah. right? So this is very normal of a place that's a little bit nicer and probably pays their workers a bit better. Um, but, so, you know, you're kind of... Yeah, whatever, but this is the rich kid, so you often let him pay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so it is what it is, Chow. <laughs> I didn't know I was rich, but I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Well, I have some ideas, though, but please continue. Right. So I was thinking what you do, because you find the room that it came from, mm -hmm. and you can just be like, oh, like we have reservations in this room. And you just kind of show her your your. Your spell phone. What I was thinking, instead of showing her my spell phone, I would do that gesture thing where you sweep it towards oh, it other goes, screens. Yeah. And it goes to, like, her screen and the screen, like, the big on-the-wall screen or right. something where it just shows up. Like, sure. you fling that display up to there. Yeah. You know, and, and you can say something like, I think we're expected, and these are our reservations. Okay. As it shows up on her screen. I'll allow it because of your high roll and your stunt points that you can kind of bypass the normal niceties of mm. the place. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I think that's fine. And so she looks at the two of you and she says, oh, uh, well, that's Elise's room. But I guess if you, she scheduled two, that's absolutely up to her. She has her own fee schedule. Don't, uh, yeah. Don't kink shame Elise. No, <laughs> All right. She says, um, will you be needing any towels or shall I bring any snacks into <laughs> like, the room? Kind of look at each other like, uh, no. <laughs> towels. Gross. <laughs> She's like, well, we're just one little calm push away. So feel free to ring if you need anything. And she kind of directs you back down one of the hallways. So walking into kind of the main area. Um, behind the concierge desk. It's very much like a club. Um, you can see that there is a dance floor, there's a full bar, um, there is an area where it looks like people are playing cards or something similar. So a lot of different activities going on unrelated to kind of the backroom business, if you want to think of it that way. So it's generally just sort of like a de like a like a pretty high quality joint to hang out and have some entertainment. One of those entertainments happens to be that there are rooms for rent, either with one of the employees or not. So it kind of operates like an inn in that way as well. And so you are directed back um, to room 13B. And when you do head back there, you can see that the door has a little like digital sign on it 
that says if it's occupied or not. Hmm. And it doesn't currently show as being in use. So um, what would you like to do? Hmm. I don't think that we should necessarily just barge in. But, uh, gosh, I don't know if knocking is the way to go either. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and knock on the door. All right. Right a tat tat. Yeah, I'll just walk up and... <laughs> All right, so knocking on the door, there is like a call from within. Mm-hmm. It's just a moment, and then after a few seconds, uh, the door opens, and inside you can see like a very like live form, a little androgynous. Mm-hmm. Um, they're wearing sort of this like split skin tight suit so there's like a deep v down the front and they have like short kind of cropped hair but a lot of like very like finely done makeup Mm. um and they look out and said oh i wasn't expecting anyone did you make a reservation Mm, okay so this is where i need to uh kind of put my cards on the table let her know that we're not here for pleasure we're here for business but not that kind of business dude <laughs> like sure um and just explain to her so are we face to face or are we is she like communicating via a little like no nope, she's up in the door it she seems like this place door. is like they said it seems decent enough quality where there isn't as much security concern once people are kind of behind the counter okay um so it, it's a very friendly sort of gesture very like transactional so the Dardanus family is super well known. They're heck rich. And they yeah. own a big company that everyone knows about. It'd it be, is one of the companies they own, yes. Right. Yeah. So it'd be kind of like, you know, if you say, like, you know, we're with uh, Intel or whatever, people right. would be like, oh, oh, okay, of course. Right. Well, we're Coke. Like, everyone knows what that is. <laughs> right. So what's the name of the company? It's Amalthea. Oh. Hmm. All right. And like I said, it's one of the companies that they own. This one, it just specializes in like Earth and Mars, wine and cheese and chocolate and things like that, that are harder to get out here. So it's one of the main companies that your ship actually gets stock from. But that's like the big company that the Dardanus family owns. It's one of them, And he, who leaned on us to go find this kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. All right. So I was looking for kind of a impressive company name. Sure. To say that we're yeah, representing. Yeah, Amalthea would be one that know. would be recognizable. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to tell Elise that I'll try to be professional okay. and say, Good evening, Miss Elise. I am Chow Sokolov. This is my associate, Katri. We're here representing the Amalthea Corporation under directive of Mr. Dardanus himself, and we're looking for a missing person. Have you seen this young man? And I hold up my hand terminal with a picture of Kai Dardanus. Looking at the picture, which you may or may not have looked at before, but just so you know, Kai is a very like attractive, fine featured young man with sort of like you know, um, very kind of chiseled Asian features, and he is definitely like you can tell from the picture that was given to you very like young looking i'm gonna go ahead and need you to make a communication call yes ma'am um to see if she will tell you anything okay so it's going to be a target number of 12. all right here we go all right doubles again okay boom and that's uh 14 plus 16. okay and i get four Four stunt stunt points. points all right and is this a social it stunt? It is a social. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's a social stunt called and another thing. <laughs> That's cool. Gain a plus one per SP spent to your next social test against the same target as this test during this encounter. Cool. So since I have four, I'm going to blow three of those on a three, a level three impress stunt. Okay. So that should give me um, a plus three on my next social test with uh, Elise. Okay. Because she'll be impressed this time because of my name dropping, perhaps, or who knows what. I don't know. Sure. (laughs) 
So she kind of, she takes in what you're saying. You can kind of tell, I would say from that role as well, when you mention like the company, the father and things like that, she looks a little bit more guarded. Mm. Um, but then looking you over and kind of seeing like your own, I mean, really it's, you have a little bit of a boyish nature yourself. Yeah. I'm pretty young. Um, she's like, you know, you don't really look the company type. I would have just slammed a door in your face. Um, I have every right to do that here, but I think maybe you're not here to rough anybody yet. No, ma'am. So (laughs) why don't the two of you come in and I'll see if I might be able to help you. Thank you so much. You've won over her trust a little bit, but she's not quite there. So what would you like to do? I know you have your social bonus right now, but is there anything that you guys would like to do to kind of put her at ease or maybe threaten her to get more information? Or how are you approaching this situation? I don't want to threaten her, but I feel like, I mean, she's she's a working girl. Mm -hmm. And I don't like when people waste my time. So I'd be like, hey... (laughs) What's your hourly rate? Here you go. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know what to roll for that, though. No, I think that totally makes sense. So it's still going to be a communication roll. Okay. But the target number is going to be lower because you're kind of speaking her language, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say let's do a target of uh, nine for that one. Whoa. Uh-huh. Or not. <laughs> So, you did get doubles, though. Yeah, you did get doubles, but it doesn't it didn't count because I only got five. Mm-hmm. That's true. So you can tell, like, <laughs> like money falls out of my pocket. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. When you try to go for that, she, you kind of get the impression that she's like, oh, like that's the kind of place you normally go to, where like the money goes in the slot <laughs> first, and then you like the screen comes down and stuff like I, that. I feel like that's fair. I feel like yeah. that's the kind of place I would normally yeah. go to. So. You can go to places that still use material currency. <laughs> like it's 2218 or something. Yeah. And so she's Fair. like, it's kind of like a, aw, honey. <laughs> what, a, oh, what a bitch. <laughs> oh, you got the, oh, sweetie. Dang. And okay. so she um, turns back to you, Chow. And she says, so what exactly are you looking for? I'm going to level with you, Elise. I traced this young man's last login to this room on Ganymede. So this is our best lead to try and find him. And all I can guarantee is that if we aren't able to bring Kai back to Mr. Dardanus quietly, it's only going to bring down a bullshit avalanche of less compromising investigators and they're absolutely going to find the same information I did because I found it immediately. And I'm just the medic on a two-bit hors d'oeuvre hauler. So do the math. So she is a little bit guarded about information about Kai. Um, So it's going to be a TN-14. Okay. Um, But you have your bonuses and everything from your stunt last round. So go ahead and make your roll. Okay. What's All right. with your rolls today? Dude, I know, right? That is 15, 17, 20 total with my plus three. Jeebs. Okay, well that succeeds. So you can see sort of the guards come down. Um, she's like, you know, I know Kai doesn't want to go back home, but I think it might be safer than whatever he's gotten into here. So... I'll tell you what I know, but it may not be much. See, Kai's a friend. When he arrived on Ganymede, he found work here and we hit it off right away. But he attracted the attention of Orn Aquilo. And it didn't take long before Orn was Kai's, pretty much his only customer. He got a sugar daddy. <laughs> and then Kai got whisked off to be Orin's live-in boyfriend. He got a sugar daddy. <laughs> okay. And yeah. honestly, I didn't hear much from him after that, so I thought maybe that meant things were going well. 
Uh, but, you know, Orn has a bit of a reputation, and I did see Kai recently. Um, I let him kind of hole up in my room for a bit so he had a place to hide out. But he said he was going to go fix it, and I haven't seen him since. How, uh, what's Orn's last name? Aquilo. Orn. Aquilo. So, A Q U I L O. Or how are you going to spell it? It's yeah. with a K. <laughs> the like space A Kilo. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. So, as far as you know, Elise, the last known whereabouts of Kai were shacking up with Orn a Kilo. He was, and then he was here. Like I said, he kind of left. It seems like things maybe weren't so good. He hung out here for a couple of nights. Uh, I let him use my terminal to check on some things, and then he said he was going to go fix it and maybe get off the station. He didn't say where he was going, though? He didn't say, but I did hear him mention something about 57D. I don't know what that is, though. Can you... um like look on the terminal like would you be able to see what he was looking at so like i'm already like you know trying to act i'm, I'm already like accessing her terminal You're to pull all the you. logs yeah it's already on it yeah but i mean i'll tell her what i'm doing like sure. oh. you know yeah you explained to her that you're trying to look that up she's like yeah i tried doing a quick search but i'm that's not really my thing it's all right I'm pulling all the uh, log data relevant to Kai's uh, stay here. When did he say he stayed here from and to? He was here the, well, I haven't seen him for about a day. He was here a couple days before that. Okay. So. To plug that into my spider here, and it's just going to crawl through all of your files and pull everything relevant to Kai and his login during that time frame. This should just take a second. There are a couple different skills you can use for this, mm -hmm. uh, and either of you could do that if you wanted to. There is intelligence, technology, or similar. Mm -hmm. um, perception, if you want to use that, or if you have a searching focus under perception or something like that. Mm. Both of those would be fine. Um, but perception or intelligence are kind of your main ones that you could use for this one. Okay. Well, definitely using intelligence, but to search her computer from my terminal... Mm -hmm. I feel like that's still in security, intelligence, and security. That would be fine. Still, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, and it's not a very high difficulty actually, so it's going to be a TN nine. Okay. Now then, I did notice mm -hmm. that I have intelligence three. I have a focus in security, but I also have a talent expertise security. So that says an additional plus one on intelligence security tests to full or bypass security sensors. So that would only apply if she has some sort of like right. security or something yeah, right. set up, which- But you're really just doing a search, basically. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm pulling information from her terminal that's relevant to investigation and like to save it. Oh, okay. And then I want to do just a search for Ornokilo uh, and how it's relevant to 57D. If, if that turns out and then I'll, you know, sure. kind of cross-reference that information with his known haunts and addresses. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, so those are a couple of different those things. Are different things. So we can do one at a time. Yeah. So what thing do you want to try to get information about first? Um, let's uh, do a search for Orna Kilo first. Okay. Sure. But we'll call it, let's call it a 14 just to like. You okay. can get some basic information. Gotcha. So this is with my security. Sorry. Get those dice below the table. I know, right? God. I'm such a shaker. All right. So that is 10, 13, 15. Okay. Mm. So just makes it. Just barely. So I will tell you that like surface information you're able to find is you do find that he's a resident of Ganymede Station um, and that he's in his 30s but not a lot of information about like business dealings or going ons or anything like that but digging a little bit deeper with the security access you have what you're seeing because you have experience with this kind of stuff is it looks like he's some kind of local 
crime boss or gang leader type based okay. on some of the stuff you're finding a little bit deeper in the network. Okay. With my background, I feel like I kind of would have already known that unless he's new here. He ha He's sort of up and coming. Okay. So he probably is building a reputation on Ganymede. If you asked around, people would probably have heard of him. But he's not one who was really working when you were here. Yeah, I've kind of... I've been gone for a few years, mm -hmm. I think, yep. as well. All right, and actually with that roll, I'll give you a little bit more information. Because you rolled so well. I did. I rolled like a boss. So kind of digging through various like security records and things like that, you do find that it looks like um, Orn has a number of rivals here on Ganymede. All right. He seems to have clashes with the local, um, some of the local OPA. And he's been shaken down more than once by the local Pinkwater security forces. Okay. You are also able to unearth some, like, snippets of, like, messages and things like that, where you hear him sounding quite infatuated with his new acquisition, which seems to be how he refers to Kai. Hmm. Creepy. But like I said, everything points to him being kind of an up-and-coming force in the Ganymede underworld. Okay. I do, I do wonder, tracking down Orn might not necessarily be the best course of action, because if Kai already left him then Orn might just be looking for him as well. Like, I feel like that's what we found out. Yeah. That we're going to be competing with this person to find Kai. Yeah. So tracking him down isn't going to necessarily lead us to who we're looking for. Um, I do want to find out what 57D means. Okay. And, yeah, for now. Right. Um... That's just an intelligence check, because you don't need to do any hacking right. for that one. And that one's the uh, TN9. Gotcha. All right. I hit 9 exactly, but with int, that is 11. Okay. 12. Boom. <laughs> Sorry, 12. Oh, yeah, and doubles. So I have two stunt points. Good Hi. catch, J-Boss. Yes, that is me. All right. Um, You do, after, like, a very basic search mm -hmm. relating to Ganymede Station. Yeah. Um, 57D appears to refer to a specific dock area. Okay. Like a bay location, basically. That makes sense that we would be kind of familiar with that. That that might mean something to us. Nothing really I can do on that that'll affect anything, really. I can just kind of say I did the speed demon thing where I just found results like kapow. Just yeah, like, she's like, I have no idea what that's referring to. And you're like, it's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like it's a duck guy right here. All right, yep. cool. Can I find out more information about it as far as like... <laughs> oh, measy. That was your As far as like opinion. what is docked there or... Whatever, if anything is docked there, if not, what left from there? Uh, doing a little bit of more digging, it looks like it's a storage area. So it's not a docking bay where like a ship would necessarily connect. It's an area where certain things could be offloaded and kept while they're waiting to be transferred somewhere else. Okay. And it doesn't seem to have any obvious um, tag on it right now. Which is a little strange, because usually you would know, like, who the contact would be for it. But it seems not to have much information in, okay. the, in the records. All right. I think that's, that's all I got, I think, for Elise. <laughs> I think we should check out this uh, storage area. I agree. I think we should go check that out. All right. Elise kind of straightens up, kind of like dabs at her eyes, because talking about Kai was a little upsetting for her. She's very fond of him. She says, 
whatever you do, I just I just want Kai to be safe. And I know I know he ran away from home, but I just I don't think he's cut out for Ganymede. Is there like Okay, I know it's not like we have cell phones and stuff, but can we give her like some kind of contact mm-hmm. thing if she yeah. wants to contact us? Sure. Do I have to roll to do that? No. Okay. <laughs> leave her your card. Yes. Look. <laughs> well, if you hear from him or you think of anything, give us a call. Type of deal. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Law and order type of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is great. We we are kind of like. Like every time we s- switch scenes, I-, I feel like there should be a jung jung, <laughs> right? Something like that. We can put like with a, with a space twist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a space twist. <laughs> it's like just two airlock noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you guys have decided to right. head to the docks. Do you want to do anything else, or search for anything else, or look at anything else on the way? There was only that one place that his um, ID number or whatever the thing came up, right? It was just here? Yeah. So we, you know that he used Elise's terminal right. to do that access. You're not sure what he was accessing, though. Right. Not yet, yeah. I I feel like I would have sent um, that those files that I pulled off of her computer from my hand terminal back to, like, the computer, the main computer on the um, sommelier. Okay. To start, like, crunching through it and sifting through. Because that's, like, more data crunching than my hand terminal could necessarily do. Sure. But the main ship computers, like, are really powerful. So I would send it back there to, like, start doing that stuff. And I'm probably (laughs) friends with the engineer enough to, like... Sure. For that to be okay, I would guess. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's say that, as far as timing, right. you'll go to your next location, and after that, we'll we'll see what the results were. Sure. You are heading towards the storage area of the docks, and being like a pretty large station where goods are coming in and going out, um, particularly because Ganymede supplies a lot of the other outer planets. Um, there are a lot of places to hold cargo. And so storage area 57D is really, if you think about having like letter rows of storage areas, you're going to the D column, going right? D block. Yeah. And then you're walking <laughs> all the way down to door 57. So it's um, a pretty expansive sort of area. Would you say it's expansive? I would say that your character just died. <laughs> <laughs> An airlock randomly open. Oh no! In the space. I hope I wasn't standing too close. So, you are going through these long series of basically sealed rooms. They're sliding doors with keypads on them. That's how you would access them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see, like, it's not empty areas. There are comings and goings of people storing things and talking through these echoey hallways. So you don't look, especially in your jumpsuits that you're in that mark you as part of a cargo ship crew, Right. you don't really look out of place at all. And you find door 57D, and like I said, like all of the other ones, there is a nondescript sort of gray sliding door currently closed with a keypad on the front. Is it locked? It is locked. Not for long. Mm. That's the knuckles cracking sound. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, pride goes before a fall, though. I feel like if I try to hack this thing, I might uh, fail because I'm like, it's not locked for long, and then I roll all ones. (laughs) Isn't that how it goes? Probably. (laughs) I would like to try to bypass the lock on this door and open it up using my security hackery jiggery pokery. Would I be able to help him at all with my engineering stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you all you're trying to do is hack it for the code, then no. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to physically bypass it, then your skill would work for that. So it depends on how you want to approach it. What do you think? That'll be the fallback plan. Like if be, I can't hack it, I'm plan then B. we're going to, like, smash it. Fair. Okay, cool. Because you don't want to leave, like, 
evidence and damage and all that. That's a good point. So. Okay. So I would like you to go ahead and try to override that lock with an intelligence. And you're using intelligence security? Security. Okay. That sounds good. It's TN12. And cool. Do I get my expertise bonus because it's a test to fool or bypass security sensors? It's not really a sensor. It's not really a sensor. Yeah, I Because it's not like biometric or anything right, like, like that. Right, I feel or, like, yeah, bypass. Like those lasers that you have to like somersault through or right. anything. A fool yeah. or bypass security sensors would be like that mm-hmm. sort of cameras yeah. and other this detectors one is a and very stuff. Old this is just school. a key beep, boop, beep, boop. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. All right. Cool. So we're gonna try and hack it with intelligence security. I do get my focus though. Ooh. Doubles. Uh. Pretty sure you're cheating. 14, 14 16, Uh. Nineteen. Okay. Well, that's dumb, but sure. And five. <laughs> five Stunt points. Okay. Yeah, basically, with the kind of wireless connection on your hand terminal, you are able to very easily identify the specific signal that you know corresponds with these like really old school number keypads. And so you know the numbers that are used, and it doesn't take very many tries to put them in the right order. Okay. Um, And it seems to happen without anyone really... It looks like you're just accessing stored goods. Nobody seems to pay you any mind. All right. Can I do it with a flourish to get a plus one against another keypad of the same type? Because the way that's worded is Mm -hmm. you gain a plus one to oppose test against them for the rest of the encounter, which is impress anyone who watches with your showmanship. So you have to impress me when you do it? Like right. you have to really... like you're the only person really watching, so, yeah. but you're not the person opposing it. So yeah. I'm just wondering if someone that's actively like, uh, opposing it on that one, right. so I don't know that that fits. Okay. I mean, since it's not a combat stunt, Mm-mm. and it's not really a social stunt, Mm-mm. so, all right. Well, then, I mean, I can just take Speed Demon to where I just do it super fast, like you said, yeah. to where it looks like I'm legit. Like, yeah. no one would bat an eye and no camera security Does the feed mm. would. Well, like, it just looks like I'm supposed to be there because I'm just, like, unlocking it. I'm not, like, Fumbling with it. All right. right. That's cool. There. All right. So. I'm going to do all my rolls above board from now on just okay. to prove I'm not a cheap <laughs> sash. <laughs> so from now on, I'm going to roll like this. Rainy style, but look at that. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Right. So, you, the lock mechanism, you hear it give. Um, so, you know that the door doesn't automatically just like open or anything like that, um, but you know you could easily touch the sensor pad to have it open if you wanted to do so. Okay. Cool. We didn't go over our, like, armaments at all. Because we both have pistols listed on our sheets. But I don't know if we would leave the ship armed or not. And, like, what sort of security happens when you go in, you know, to the station proper and all that kind of stuff. So I wonder, like, are we armed? Or how did that end up happening? Yeah, so you do have your basic sidearms as part of being, like, a licensed cargo ship. um, You're allowed to, like, you're licensed to have certain things, but you would probably not be allowed to go into, like, the kind of ritzier areas of Ganymede in your getup and stuff like that. You're kind of expected to stay in, like, the major hub areas. So, like, the dock and cargo areas... And then, like, the whore visiting houses. areas, like whorehouses, restaurants, and that sort of gotcha. thing. Gotcha. And then as you go into the ritzier areas, they have their, like, gated community style Where you would go stuff. through <laughs> security. Where you would get right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds legit. Okay. All right. Glad so. I could make something up that works for you. Makes sense. Yeah. I'll do the classic hacker line of, and we're in. And I'll look over... And you have uh, minus five to your next roll. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'll look over at Kotri and say, all right, let's check it out. Can I... Because we don't know what's in here or who's in here, really. No. Can I... Isn't that a thing that like, I can draw my weapon? Just yeah, so I it's have a minor out? action to, to have that ready. Do I have to roll to do that? Or no. can I just do that? No. You have to roll to use it, but I'm assuming you know how to put it in your hand. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do that just in case because we don't know what's... Sure. Absolutely. In there. Don't know what we're walking into. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So opening the door, what you notice almost immediately is like as soon as you even have your head inside, it's much quieter. These are very like insulated and reinforced for the various things that could be stored in here. Um, and are you walking in or are you just opening it and checking it out from outside or how? Describe well, to me I think your thoughts and ideas. That I'll hit the button to open the door. Mm -hmm. And then opens up and looking in like you can tell pretty much just at first glance does it look does it appear safe like if it's not pitch black you can see what's on the other side right like that so sort of opening thing. the door you see it's a lot deeper than you thought um that it actually spans the whole width of this block um and so you can see various crates and um, containers and pelican chest type stuff, mm -hmm. you know, of goods, it looks like. But it goes pretty far back, so you can't see everything that's in here. Like um, a... It is lit, because as soon as the door opens, like, the automatic lights come on going back. Mm. Um, and there are various, like, terminals and things that are look like they're kept for inventory management and adjustments and things like that. Okay. Yeah, I think we should step in, close the door behind us. All right. So you step in and close the door. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to lock it. Okay. You may do so. Do you want to roll to try to do it in a different way, or do you want to just use the default lock? No, I want to see if I can lock it and change the code. Okay. And also, like, reset any admin override or whatever, just oh, okay. so that someone coming in after us would be at least slowed down or completely stymied depending on their level of expertise. Okay, let's call that um, a TN 14 just because you're changing systems that are already there. Okay. While he's doing that, can I just be like kind of scanning the room and seeing if there's anything yes. that seems odd for a storage? I would like, like if anybody's you been here lately, that kind of thing. To go ahead and make a perception test. Okay. So I'm just going to roll and then add one, right? Yep. For my perception. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's pretty good. Okay, that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So looking around, you do notice a few things that will immediately catch your eye. How did okay. you do on your check? I didn't do so well. I missed it by one. Okay. I rolled a 13. So it is locked but you weren't able to get your code change in there. Okay. But it will be very apparent if someone starts to tap in the code. Yeah, and I there's a lot of places in here. Set like a little yeah. alert on my hand terminal. Absolutely. Like, if someone opens it, it alerts me. Yeah. That's cool. That's good enough. Did okay. you say this place is a, is a block deep? Like as far as the block of storage okay. rows. Yeah. Not like a city. Block. I know. I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. What kind of storage <laughs> unit is this? All right. So... You notice a few things. There are, most of the crates in here are tagged as Amalthea Ambrosia goods. Okay. So the same company that had asked you to come out here. Right. Um, the various containers have different labels like vacuum sealed for freshness and things like that. Um, but you recognize them. They look very much the same as the types of crates you guys bring here all the time. Right. But of interest is that they do all appear to be from that company. Okay. Is there any evidence that anybody's been in here recently? In the meantime, I'll send an alert to Katri's hand terminal as well so that it's just like a text message, basically. Hey, if anyone opens the door we just came through, it'll send you an alert. 
Did it have the Simodi on it? Yes. Uh, it started it started with the uh, like thinky one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. The other thing you notice because your roll is very high. Yes. Um, is that once the doors close, mm-hmm. you note that the sound of like the air circulation pumps changes. Like you notice a shift in the sound of the way they're working. Okay. Like they're still working and everything just differently? Yeah. It's like, it's almost like a fan where a setting was changed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do I feel nervous about that? Um, if you want, you can roll your engineering type stuff to I see if you might recognize what that is. Mm. So, 11. Oh, okay. So, you recognize that the pumps have been set up in such a way. You don't know if it's a trap or uh, an issue of the type of goods that are stored here, but it's pulling all of your breathable air out. It's turning this room into vacuum very quickly. Oh no. I'm gonna definitely mention that to my buddy over there. <laughs> oh. Okay. So that's something you tell me? Yeah. That? All right, cool. So as soon as Katri tells me that, I'll say, I'm on it. I'm gonna <laughs> get on my terminal and try to override that. Okay. So you may, you go to the door and what you notice immediately like with your, you're just trying to override the pumps? Yeah, okay. so it stops sucking the air out. You may roll to do so. All right, so that is better. That is 9, 12, 14. Okay. Assuming that that's security. Assuming I yes. get a focus bonus. Mm-hmm. You can use your security because for that. So here's the thing about this test. This is an advanced test. Ooh. So you have one success right now. Okay. And what was your drama die on that one? Five? Yes. So yeah, you start your hack and you feel like it's going well to try to reverse whatever is happening here. Um, but it's going to take a while. Mm. And it's already getting difficult to breathe. So I need each of you to make a constitution test. Oh, I'm not very constitution-y. Uh, but oh. I do have very high willpower with a focus in self-discipline. So, so talk to me about how you would utilize that to help your role. Just to stay focused on what I'm doing, like as you asphyxiate, you start getting like tunnel vision and lightheaded and woozy, and it's easy to lose focus on that. And that's like a skill that like pilots have and all that kind of stuff when they're pulling hard G's and all that kind of stuff. They have to stay alert and focused even though they're they're under all this physical stress. So okay. what I'm getting at is that my constitution isn't high. Right. But even if I start to suffer ill effects, I should still be able to focus on my like okay. job that I'm doing. Sure, sure. Because doubles. Right. So that is that's just a straight ten though. Okay. Because uh, my constitution is that's, just average. That's enough it's for just this round. Zero. Ten is enough. And you did fine. You yeah. know. Yeah. No, you trained. I got in a these seventeen. Conditions. I just wanted yeah. I'm excited. I got yeah. a seventeen. Yeah. See, we need to celebrate. Casey, your like role. to announce. I would like, yeah, I'd like to announce my seventeen because fuck yeah. <laughs> there you go. Casey like, has oh, trained no in these here? conditions. You're not alarmed. Like you know, oh, we're starting to go into vacuum. You hold your breath. You like you know kind of the things that you can do to center yourself and prepare for operating in these conditions for a while okay. before it's really going to start to impact you. And you can see your cohort, although he's staying focused on what he's doing, you can already tell he's not doing the right things physically to last very long okay. in this sort of environment. Would I be able to change the pump problem situation with my engineering stuff? You could certainly try, since oh. both of you can work on this because it's an advanced test, so it's kind of a long-term thing. Okay. So you, yeah, you can both be working on it in different places. That's okay. really fine. All right. Ooh. So why don't you go ahead and make an engineering check, and why don't you make your next roll? Damn it, Dice. What the fuck? 
It's because it talks shit on my last roll. Oh. That's true. <laughs> that is how it goes. I got a six. Okay. So yeah, you're basically kind of moving around the room right now trying to find panels that you can like tear out to get physically to the pump system and you're not having luck right now. Okay. But you can keep looking. How did you do on yours? I got 16. Woo! You're traumatized. So you guys are continuing to work through these conditions. You feel like you're very close to getting this change made. Um, But both of you will need to make another constitution check. Our difficulty has gone up to... This time. All right. Made it. Yeah, I just need to keep you in vacuum. I'm super fine fine in vacuum. I just can't do anything, apparently. (laughs) So you're both fine. Um, You're able to kind of mimic a little bit of what you see Casey doing to help you manage. And you are just continuing to work. Like, you're not even paying attention to the fact that there's no air in here. You've already you figured that out already. That's not your problem. So why don't you go ahead and make your next engineering check. All right. There you go. Uh, so 13, 14, 15. Okay. So you are hacking through, changing some of the electronics. You can hear things changing. And you reach up. You see that there's a panel way up above you. And you're like, oh, and you activate your mag boots and start walking up the wall to get to it. Oh, that's cool. And then you pop it open and you can see where all the right signals are going to it to like fix this issue. And you just kind of bang on it and then flip something <laughs> and everything starts flowing the other way. Do I share like Fonzie with the jukebox? Yeah, like kind of one of those? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> And so You're dating yourself. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Everyone's breathing easier. All the, all the kids listen to the show. What the fuck is a font? I know, right? But <laughs> Google it. Smoogle it. With your role, you can definitely tell that this was tampered with to do that. This is not a normal function okay. of that pump. So someone set this up. I will definitely pass that along. Okay. Once my compadre gets all the air back in his face. Again, you're in this room with all of these Amalthea crates. Um, in the room that Kai Dardanus mentioned to Elise. Um, coming in here, it looks like someone set up whoever might try to come in here to have an issue. What would you like to do? I would like to see if I can scan for any hand terminal signals, like any active connection points or anything like that that I could locate in this room, if possible. For like someone actively connected to it now, or what do no, you? No, just for? like a, a like if there's if I can find a hand terminal in here that is connected you know well so there are like wall terminals in here Mm -hmm. that are like the primary like oh this number was off or these weights need to be changed or whatever okay that sort of thing um there aren't any hand terminals that you notice like outside of the crates or anything like that um but there are wall terminals well i can start digging in the or wall terminal to uh see if i can figure out who set this trap okay can I kind of like just clear the room and make sure there's no yeah, yeah. Absolutely. body in there? So I'll have or you make a perception pillow and stuff. Yeah. Jamie's in the back. Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> perception <laughs> test, and you can make your your hacky hacks. Okay, I think this one is not going to be a security one unless I'm doing a deep dive on this and have to bypass. No, I think the you're just kind systems. of yeah, looking it up. To see who was act, checking like, logs, how it was so. accessed. Yeah, you're just looking through the record that's in there. All right. Cool. That is 13. Okay. And then your perception was eat. <laughs> you know, making your way downtown. This is this is a storage unit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move um, along, folks. Jedi business. <laughs> yeah. Based on the kind of state of the crates and everything, you think that these are all here very recently. Wait, did I hit my thingy? You did well enough to know, like, there's no one in here. And it's not like 
it looks like everything was kind of loaded in here pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, because it's very haphazard. It's not like stacked in a way where it's like, oh, these are going to this area. These right. are going over here, which is how you would unload yeah, them for so your Yeah, I'm shit. obviously annoyed by that. Yeah, because you're very organized. Yeah, fucking slackers. Yeah, these people, like, some of them are like, you know, half leaning on oh other God. crates where like whatever goods are inside have obviously <laughs> rolled, maybe even bruised. Do they even one store the stuff? Like, what the fuck? And it's, wow. You know, they're boxes <laughs> that are meant to stack on each other. Yeah. And, like, one of them's just leaning. Do you even stack, bro? Like, yeah. what the fuck? So, whoever did this, like, quickly just kind of threw stuff in here. Right. Um, and it's going to make your Martian blood boil. <laughs> it is, as a, it is. As a duster, you're just very <laughs> regimented military cog in the machine. Yeah. There's a right way, there's a wrong way to do things. Yeah. <laughs> you are looking through the logs, and everything seems very, like, nondescript. Like, just, like, random names that are very innocent sounding like Frederick Davis and stuff like that. But there are two things that you notice um, with your role. One is that the order for these goods... Because, like, every, all cargo is linked to an order. Someone brought it onto planet, right? Mm -hmm. The order matches Kai Dardanus' access okay. um, information. Got it. Um, the other thing you notice that you wouldn't notice, probably, if you weren't a local and hadn't worked in these circles before, is some of the names that are in there under the access logs are names that signify, like, OPA activity. Like, it's not where it's like, OPA stuff, or anything like that. <laughs> but you know when it says, like, like Jane Ferrer, that means that it's an OPA slash, like, don't mess with it sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. It's starting to sound like a uh, dude had to get off station, so he ordered some stuff from his dad's company knowing how to manipulate things and knowing where it would be delivered so ordered the stuff it shows up and he just like scrapes all this the the goods out of it and made a big enough order so that it would be arrive it would arrive in like a container big enough for him to fit in and then like hopped in it and like stowawayed out on its return to you know, the dis distribution warehouse or whatever. Right. That's my th working theory right now. So I'm going to have to tell Katri. <laughs> I refer to um, Mr. Katri by her last name because we're crewmates. Yeah, sure. you're very professional. And uh, it's just how naval people talk to each other. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I'll have to... But I'm, like, looking around, and she's, like, gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> he wandered off to do whatever. I'm just and muttering was, about like, the crates. And yeah, you're looking around, and eventually, like, at a far side, where it's like, cause she looks much smaller. This thing is so long, you know? Um, you see her just looking very disappointedly at a strange, like, stack of crates. Okay. I'll stroll over to stand next to her and look at the crate myself. And is there, like, a manifest on it or that says what's inside it? No, or? there are many very, like, happy-looking stickers that you recognize from your own ship's freight that say, like, vacuum sealed for freshness. Mm -hmm. Only the finest ingredients not available in the belt. All right, cool. Let's crack it open. Okay. Uh, well, how's your strength? Uh, not good. I wasn't thinking I'd have to force it open. I thought I could just be, like, you know... Because it's a crate, like, it is for crate. shipping, so you <laughs> should right. be able to... Easy open. You know, open it. <laughs> just, I'm not trying to... Like, I just thought I could open it. Sorry, I wasn't thinking I'd have to force it or jimmy No, I know. I just like making fun of your weak character. My strength is actually one, thank you very much, <laughs> which in this system is actually, actually pretty, pretty good. good. It's, so, it's a nice yeah, average. Yeah, like three or something. I'm going to watch him, like, tear at the plastic and then just be like... 
<laughs> Step aside. Step yeah. aside. Yeah. So you see him, like, Ow. go ahead and roll a strength <laughs> test just to, okay. just for the sake of strength. Now. I'm going to roll all sixes right in your face. The old one. Probably because you're cheating. Dang. Five, wow. Five, four. Woo. Oh, so you have um, Doubles. five points to Doubles. spend on a stunt. Nice. Flourish it. What kind of stunt is that? Is it like... This is really exploration, but I would say you could argue some of the combat ones, depending on how you wanted to approach this. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know that uh, there's anything really combat-y here. No, it, it probably well, Look, not. look at Shock yeah. and Awe. When you succeed at a non-attack physical feat... Mm. Anyone who witnesses it rolls willpower, courage, or morale versus your strength intimidation. If you win, they suffer a minus one to the next opposed roll they make against you. That's no, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to nerf my teammate. I just want to. Well, it's only like, if she tries to do something against you in the future. Uh, it's yeah, the next that's, that's true. thing against you. That's true. Like arm wrestling. <laughs> A minus one to their defense versus your next attack against them, or a minus one to the next opposed roll they make against you, whichever comes first. Right. Uh, I don't know that that'll necessarily help. Yeah, but what the heck? Shock and awe. <laughs> right, I need you to make a willpower test, please. I'm not expecting. Versus your. Um, it is strength intimidation. So, so that's pretty you're going to roll strength. Okay. Gotcha. That is, uh, eight. Nine. Sorry. And you said yours was eight? Yes, ma'am. With everything added? I only have one willpower. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You are ready for this to be hilarious, because this particular crate that he decided to bust into for whatever reason is like vacuum sealed so it has like the little like plasticky sort of vacuum bag over it that, with no obvious seam and stuff like that and you're just like this will be hilarious like you're getting your knife out like ready to right. assist and this kid just like finds it, like rips it open, like unzips it, like pulls it out, fluid motion, fixes one of the other crates that's leaning <laughs> inappropriately while, and you're just like, you've underestimated this person. And you're gonna think no twice, days. yeah, before you, you try to- Mess with Chow? Yeah, try to make him look foolish in the future. There. Hey. All right. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> so opening the crate quite easily. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, with your cheater dice. <laughs> cheater dice. <laughs> I'm going to buy you new dice. Well, so <laughs> it's because my drama die is like oh, proto sparkly. molecule blue yeah, it is. and space black. Oh, it's goodness. like the awesomest combo yeah. ever. Yeah. Look how beautiful it's that is. It's great. They're, they are pretty cute. Okay. I mean, cool and yeah. manly. You're, They're manly yeah, dice. Yeah, they're very glittery cute dice. And pretty. I'm, all, yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> you're fancy. It's all good. You're fancy yeah. like that. Opening it up again. It's. Amalthea goods you are very used to. You see um, bottles of wine from Earth Vineyards. You see Martian processed chocolate. Um, all the goods you guys normally carry back and forth from this company. It doesn't look like the crates seem to be a cover for hauling something else. They are legit what they are. This is a lot of them, so this is a very expensive haul for yeah. sure. Um, but it seems to be what you would expect based on the labeling. All right. So I'll grab a, a bottle of wine and examine the label mm -hmm. and toss it over to Katri. Okay. And I'm just going to assume that she's going to easily catch it. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't even make her roll for that. dexterous and stuff. And I'm not, like, throwing it. Chucking it's it like, at my head. It's a, like, it's a toss, like, like, like a like, here, like, you know what I mean? End over end. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Ah! <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a friendly toss. Right. You know, and, and then grab a chocolate bar and un start unwrapping it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I mean, when you crack into that, look at all this stuff. No one's going to miss it. Take a bite of the chocolate bar. I'm I'm not. I feel like I'm all yeah. You're very business. uptight and yeah. like 
This is against regulations, and you should know that. Shame on you, yeah. Chow. Normally, you would admonish him pretty severely for this sort of behavior. Right. After, you know, the performances he's had today, <laughs> you're kind of letting it slide, but internally, you're screaming a little yeah, bit. But it's not died. your cargo, so that's kind of how you're justifying it right now. Yeah, I'll just kind of give it an eye roll. And, and so as he digs into this chocolate boyish feature is now marred by a slight brown (laughs) outline around his mouth. (laughs) The alert on your hand terminals indicates that someone is opening the door. Great! (laughs) And two tough-looking locals muscle in towards you and say, Ah, what are these rats up to then? And that's where we'll go ahead and end it today. Wow, leave it on the cliffhanger. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to like Finish nonchalantly explain my working theory and uh, like, remark on are these real almonds? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, that sort of thing. No, you're that's, like the, that was uh, my plan. yeah, the kid from The Simpsons. Oh uh, yeah. Gunther, is it? Is he the chocolate kid? Gunther, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Don't chase me. I'm full of chocolates. Or whatever that line is. That's who Chow is to me and now. He has <laughs> chocolate <around his> <laughs> <laughs> Matt always does this one where it's like, I guess there was like some kind of. They had to build something and he builds his out of chocolate, and by the time they get to judge his, he ate it all. <laughs> and he's like, I begged you to look at mine first. I begged you. <laughs> good times. Yeah. Alright, so you've been in a couple of different locations in the game so far. Um, how are rules, roles, is it pretty straightforward? Yeah. So I like, like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's easy to pick up. Like, it's easier than, like, as, like, the, what do you call it, token new person. Right, right. Like, I felt like it was pretty easy to understand what was going on. and It definitely, I think, makes it an easier system to jump into because it's like one roll. Yeah. It's like, do I add things to it or not? Yeah. Cool. But it's like, it's three dice. I can probably add those. Yeah. Up. It's okay. Well, and like, maybe it's kind of corny, but when we took our break and watched episode one, like, that did actually help. Like, <laughs> yeah. kind of be like, oh, it okay. You in the place. Yeah. The like, place. I kind of get yeah. what we're, where we are. Right. Yeah. I didn't see Thomas Jane, so I was disappointed. Like, I hope right. he was going to pop up and be like, hey. Well, you know, there's still time. What's up, Jessica's character? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Santi's character. Well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, depends All on, covered in chocolate. <laughs> depending on where it's set. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, my chow just eats like a shit pig hobo. <laughs> like, like, it's just your punishment for rolling too well. I have to make you silly. Like, unwraps it and doesn't like take a bite, but like unwraps and is just like <laughs> just hobbles it. Just whoa. Yeah. Like to some... be fair, to put it in context though, these <laughs> in a bouncy cab or something. <laughs> these treats are just so <laughs> like expensive. Like, you've probably never had any of the oh, wares yeah, no. that you dragged down here. And you've had not. chocolate in your kid because your family was well off. Right. But that's not something you've had in a long time. <laughs> okay. So it's possible you did revert quite a bit. Or you're like, ooh, chocolate. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Eating, eating it Gur style or just slap it on your face and lick it off. Uh, anyway, fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Hilarious, though. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So next time, we'll see what these toughs want of you. Mm. And I think probably wrap it up, because there's only a little bit more for you guys to do in this one. So you kind of investigated kind of the main, like, what was he, what was the code used for, kind of where are things headed. And now things are starting to, to happen. Yeah. So We're we'll putting get together to a picture of yeah. this cool. here. All right. So thank you, Barbarians, for listening to this episode. Join us next time where we wrap up our fireside story in the Expanse RPG. And until next time, spend your rage wisely. Get yourself (laughs) some chocolate. (laughs) I can't believe you've never had chicken and waffles, though. I'm sorry. No, No, don't apologize. It's just that we're about to change your life. Well, I know it's also good, kind of like when you play D&D with us. The only problem is they're decent chicken and waffles. So you're going to go to, like, some stupid restaurant with, like, mm, chicken and waffles, and it's going to be bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, cornflake-crusted bullshit. Yeah, yeah, like, where the, <laughs> like, 
where the, the breading like comes off of the chicken uh, and then it's just this sad like gross under it because it has that space in between. Yeah, that doesn't sound exciting. Grease was too hot and shit like that. And right. All of that. You're just gonna be like, it's not maple syrup. It's that high fructose fake ass shit log cabin bullshit. <laughs> fuck is this get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> gonna be all mad so, oh no no it, it's so you're ruining another thing for me yes. yeah basically because okay. yeah. time is gonna split into two parts for you before this and after this you can come play trains yeah that's just her favorite game i can't remember what it's called uh ticket to ride oh yeah oh. yeah that's like a nerdy ass sport. That no, when, when we let her pick, that's what she picks. That's that, like a that's hardcore, legit. like, if you're like a tabletop nerd, really? you play Ticket to Ride and Settlers of Catan. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's legit. I'm like, she surprised. has hella cred. That's not what yeah. I was expecting. She's got like three or four versions of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She has like Europe and the, the US and... Respect. Yeah. Today we learned what's up. that Jessica's the daughter of a hardcore tabletop nerd. <laughs> <Word>. <laughs> like, yeah, man. You know. Ticket to Ride, you're in. It's like, oh, your parents play Monopoly and shit? Jessica's mom plays Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Like a badass. <laughs> it's kind of awesome, though, because like, if something like doesn't go her way, she's like, oh, crumb. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Uh... How dare you? Rude! What? <laughs> <laughs> So I just I like it. Whoa. Oh. She's worried about the air. Oh, it's vacuum, guys. Thank you, guys. You can't breathe in space. <laughs>